ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Gosh, I'm excited. Me and me and Drew were just sitting in the green room <laughs> talking about how excited I am. And obviously excited about the podcast. I'm always excited about the podcast, always excited about the live stream. But I'll tell you what I'm really excited about. And this episode will come out before it happens. So if you're listening to this and you live anywhere near Georgia and you're looking for a kayak tournament to go fish, the weekend of the what is it what third what are, third fourth fifth third fourth and fifth i may yep in thomaston georgia sholey palooza is going on which is the first event of the kayak adventure series if I can i'm gonna right. be there and i'm so excited me and john's been texting back and forth all day long because me and john are kind of traveling together you know travel partners and we were like i'm like you research some stuff on the the um uh, what would the oak mogi i'm gonna research yeah. some stuff on the yeah. flight, and we're just gonna I want to catch a shoal bass. I've never caught a shoal bass. So that literally, just to come down there and put my hands on yes. it is going to be epic, first of all. But, dude, I'm yeah, buddy. jacked about it. I think it's going to be so much fun, bro. I'm so excited. Yeah, it's going to be a blast. I mean, a lot of people are going to catch their first shoal bass. Yeah. And that's kind of the point. You know what I mean? It's Sholey Palooza. Like, and I've said this before. We did a reel. Um, Jay Kepner put together a pretty cool reel when we did a live one time when I was just kind of telling people, like, like Alex, just you guys listening. How many times do you live? How many times do you get? You get one, one, one time, buddy. There we go. And how many times are you just gonna randomly say, I, you know, you live in West Virginia, you live in Indiana, you live in Arkansas? How many times are you just gonna randomly just pick up with your buddies, not knowing a clue what's going on? And just let's just go to Georgia and catch the shoal bass. It's been on our bucket list. Like, you're not gonna do it like nope. randomly out of the blue. Yeah. But now you have a reason to get in the car with your buddies travel and catch that bucket list fish that is worth catching yep. because I know you're uh, overrated underrated but shoal bass is on the list. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you why it's, it's they're high up on that list. For okay, black wait, wait, well then let's Not, just go well, knock this one out. Let's knock this Not, one out. Underrated. <laughs> okay. Overrated. Shoal bass. Go ahead, Drew. All right. So, and I guess enough people are getting on now. So you oh, guys yeah, can, yeah, can yeah. fill in with your comments. All right. So, Here's my take on this question. Underrated, overrated shoal bass. Well, a lot of people have never caught a shoal bass, so they don't know how to rate the shoal bass. You know what I mean? Yeah. But for me, I'm going to tell you, I've caught every black bass species, every subspecies, all of them. You know what I mean? And yeah. Even the ones that you most people watching have no clue what they are and where they live and what it is. That's fine. Uh, I'm just a nerd like that, right? So, <laughs> But the let's rank – the way you say underrated or overrated is I would say let's rank this fish. If you ask most people out there – Okay. If they just forget shoal bass, let's just rank the black bass species. Which one would you prefer to catch? Most of them are going to, you know, smallmouth is probably going to take the top spot. Wouldn't you think in that you guys? Yeah, chime I mean, in. For most people, I think it's like if they've never caught a smallmouth, they're going to obviously say largemouth. If they've caught right. a smallmouth, they're going to say smallmouth. Small and mouth. Then if so they largemouth will be second. Brain. Yeah. And then if yeah. they have a brain of any size, they're going to say a spotted bass because that's my absolute favorite. But. Yeah. Being sad, I've not put my hands yeah. on a shoal bass yet, so we're going to have to see. <laughs> I told Shan, we, Shan and I went live, and I was like, we need to bust Alex and everybody. Just be kind of like jerks because you're our buddy. We can do it. We can mess with yeah. it. And every time, because you don't really care about a spotted bass because they only get this big. You really care about an Alabama bass. The Alabama but, spots, but yeah. You're, yeah, the Alabama, yeah, the Alabama bass. But, yeah, I, I would at least accept Alabama spots. That's at least a, a move in the right direction. But anyway, yeah. Yeah. I see – but well, I get what you're saying, that that one is – and you happen to live in an area that's got the correct ones and that mm -hmm. have been put in there, and they get big, so they're fun. Mm -hmm. But most people would say smallmouth – and even the ones you catch, the Alabama bass, they typically don't get as big as the freaks you're catching. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like California, they're 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 trout eaters and they're freaks there. Yeah. But mostly, if you go to the Coosa River system, the Alabama bass native like area, they actually really don't get that big. I mean, every once in a while you knock out a four pounder, but mm -hmm. generally they just don't. They're not I that mean, compared to a smallmouth or a largemouth. They're yeah. not that. They're like number three. Yeah, and what's weird I mean, is like we live in a kind of weird area. Like in, I've talked about this with some biologists. We're almost like in like the perfect spotted yeah. bass belt. Like California is one of those places, and then right here in Tennessee is too. And it's a combination of trout and temperature. And so we yeah. don't get cold enough to like really hurt them. We don't get really warm enough to hurt them. And then they've got trout to eat and gizzard shad to eat and stuff yeah. like that. So we're getting those freaks. Whereas right. like when we get in any other lake, they just ruin it. You know what I mean? But anyway, go yeah. on. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they're great fish. I mean, in their natural native range and even where they, they ended up where we put them, 
dude, they're fun. Like, let's catch them, obviously, and let's have fun with them. It's it's a shame that they have pushed out smallmouth and stuff and different fisheries, and they might continue to do that in largemouth and fisheries, but whatever. They're fun, dude. I'm going to put them at number three if you're not counting shoal bass. Okay. Smallmouth, largemouth, because you can't flip – in a mat and, and hook up with a double digit spot of bass, dude. You cannot hear that braid sing. You cannot throw it this giant swim bait like you can for a huge double digit seven, eight, nine pound largemouth. It's just I gotta put them third. So now let's now let's bring show bass into the equation. Yeah. Show bass are like a small mouth with a bigger mouth, and they're they're actually closest related to the Alabama bass. Mm -hmm. And so they are just and you're gonna find out, bro. They are, you're going to like those fish better than the Alabama bass. You're going to like them better than the largemouth, And they're probably going to get darn close to smallmouth in your, in most people's opinion. So I would say smallmouth, one, a one B shoal bass and two large mouth and in three or four, whatever you want to call that Alabama. So yeah. can, now that we've ranked them, I would say they are probably underrated because most people yeah. just don't understand yeah. That they get that big because they were, they used to be a red eye bass. And then in 1997, which it takes a long time for the message to get across about what's really what, as you can see by this whole, we still call the Alabama bass spotted bass situation. But anyway, I say they're underrated fish and that's why you got to come to Sholey Palooza and go catch one. Yeah, dude. No, I'm jacked. I've been watching some videos and uh, I spent, so my yeah. day today consisted of editing videos and watching other people's videos about mm -hmm. fishing, you know, some of the rivers that we can fish down there doing a little bit of research and dude, Oh God. Man, I watched this one dude catch like a six and a half, another six and a half, a five and some change and a four all on a chopo. Standing <laughs> in like knee deep water throwing up into this pool. And I, I texted yeah. him and I was like, John, you're going to have to bring a defibrillator, bro, because I'm going to have a heart attack if we even get anywhere oh, near yeah. that bite. Like, dude, I am, I am, yeah, bro. I'm, dude, I have to say, I'm share not. Share my screen. Share my okay. screen. <laughs> Let's get jacked. Let's get jacked. Oh, Lord. All right. So here's, and dude, I could sit here and flash Ugh. through photos of hundreds of fish like this, but these are just a few I picked out. Um, it's Dr. Sammons, who you're going to hear speak at Sholey Palooza at the seminar on, uh, I want to say Friday morning, the Bash U brunch. These are just some old school photos. Look at me, my little Cub Scout hat or whatever that is. <laughs> um, here I am, just just a kid, dude, just throwing big buzz baits, catching giant sholies. That's awesome. Um, yeah, and then that's a, the head of a 7-2 that ate a big swim bait. So you can see they live in some swift water, eat big baits. Dr. Salmon's again. Um, there's that fish, that 7-2. Barely, I mean, it's just – Huge. Imagine hook hooking one that big in that kind of current right there when they get into it. Rapids and I mean, dude, they seem it's to a, be like they seem it. to have the temperament of a spotted bass and in in but like the they just got a little bit bigger oh, mouth. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Bigger. Yeah. You're exactly right. So they're so think about it. They're this Alabama bass in current. So you catch them in river, so you know what I'm talking about. And which is a whole nother animal. Every, every black bass, once you say in a river, it changes a little bit. You know what I mean? Like a large yeah. mouth in a lake is not the same as a large mouth in a river. They're going to fight so much harder because they got the current and they're just stronger, you know? So now you're thinking you're, you're all right on track. It's an Alabama yeah. bass with a, you know, bigger mouth and it lives in the river. So it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's pretty cool, but um, that's a seven, two again, right here. And that was 24 and a quarter inches long. So this fish is not a small fish mm. guys by any means. And the coolest thing, and we can stop the screen if you want now, but yeah. um, the uh, coolest thing guys about this fish. And one of the, I'd say the coolest facts about it is that most of the time in a tournament or just fun fishing, whatever, but in a tournament, especially we're really targeting, we're trying to catch 25% of the bass population mm -hmm. females, that are adult mm -hmm. really because the males don't get as big. Now you could certainly find a three, four, five pound male that you can get to come across one that you're not, not going to like turn it down obviously, but we're really kind of mainly trying to get those bigger females, which is like mm -hmm. half of the, half of the female population is probably approximately probably an adult. And because they're the ones that get big and that's called sexual dimorphism, but mm -hmm. shoal bass don't have sexual, sexual dimorphism. What that means is a uh, yeah, <laughs> look, I love your face there. What that means, guys, is that the males get just as big as the females, pretty much. You know, the females will get a little bit heavier because they got the eggs, but the males are going to get just as big. So, when you are out there in the spring and they're stacked up and they're in the shoals and they're aggressive and they're they're feeding, when you catch 30 or 40 fish in a day, let's say you catch 40, 
I yeah. bet you 20 of those fish will be pretty close to three pounds and over. Yeah. And that's a day right there. Well, I've had days where I've caught, I think nine or 10 over four pounds in a day of fishing. And when you catch them I out, you no know, idea. I, I had no idea they didn't have that. The, 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 the nemorph. Yeah. yeah I didn't know they didn't. I didn't know. Oh God. <laughs> oh God, Drew. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're you're dimorphous. <laughs> you're, I don't know. I just made up a word. You're dimorphous, dude. <laughs> dude, I, I, yeah. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Yeah, well, it's gonna let, be fun. Let me tell you how jacked I am about it and how excited I really am for it. I actually am already like prepping tackle for it. And even though I got to fish all next week, yeah. and, you know, I mean, like I've got stuff to do next week. I'm still already prepping tackle. Like I am so jacked. I got the shoaly ready to rock. I'm just. Dude, it's going to be so much fun because it's like right oh, yeah. up my alley. Now, obviously, there's there's opportunities for dudes to fish in lakes and fish in kayaks with motors oh, and yeah. stuff. Me and John have already taught ourselves paddle kayaks, sholies, rocking with it that way. That's just the way we want to fish this coming week. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, but, it's simple. Yeah, it's easy. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. If you I'm want, sure. before we get off this, just to show the screen, this is the, uh, kayak, the kayak Adventure Series website. Uh, let me know when you got it up and I'll start scrolling down. Yes. This is the theater, the Ritz theater we're going to be at. You know, if you're up for it, we've talked about it. You and I be on stage. We'll make we'll the anglers yeah. laugh. We'll show, we'll show the cool videos uh, of some of their catches. If you guys get some good GoPro footage. And this is, uh, this is, I think the, the Flint river here on a, a cool drone shot that Tyler Bean took. And man, it's just so beautiful. Middle Georgia guys. It's, you know, that, that river is going to be dammed up a long time ago. And Jimmy Carter took a canoe trip down there and they had to make a decision on that. And because of President Jimmy Carter, he saved that river from ever being dammed up, uh, at least the upper Flint, which is where this is. It's dammed up eventually, you know, down downstream in Blackshear and Lake Seminole and all that. But but um, it's you got beautiful spider lilies. I mean, this is like this is some of the cool water you guys are going to fish and you can tether and, and uh, wade and portage over stuff like that with your kayak and the kayak adventure series. But uh, some of this is Akmogi, some of this is Chattahoochee, some of this is, you know, the, the Flint. But, I mean, look at this kind of water. This is just epic. So, going to be a fun event. And then, uh, as you can see, if you guys want more information and want to check out how to register and all that, just go, well, I think I showed you guys most of these pictures. But uh, I will brag on my wife. Oh, hang on, sorry. And show this shot that wasn't in the other. And there's some other guys. There she is with a five-pounder. Oh, begging. Yep, just just wading, just wade fishing and God. catching her there. So there's this uh North Georgia fisherman there, Luis Delgado. There's Craig Dye, Tyler Bean. So yeah, they're they're in there, man. It's a, it's gonna be a good time. And uh, this guy right here, he'll he'll do a seminar and he'll tell you some crazy stuff when they've tagged these fish before. Because I know you love the fisheries biologist stuff. You have them on the show. I love it too. And I learned so much from these guys, and it helps me become a much better angler. But this guy here. He'll tell you stories when they were doing the original tagging studies uh -huh. because they needed to learn about this fish once it got scientifically, like, obviously made official, right? Different uh -huh. than a red eye. So now uh -huh. Georgia's got to be like, well, what in the world do we have here? Let's get some biologists to go figure it out. Uh -huh. We need to do tagging studies. Well, they would, a, a biologist in a lake, man, if they tag like a hundred bass or whatever, a thousand bass, let's say a thousand, they'll be lucky to get one tag back or a couple tags back, you know, really like from the anglers catching them for someone to catch them and, and give them information about where it was caught. The shoal bass, man, they put like a hundred tags out or let's say a thousand. They it's insane how many they get back. And then here's, what's crazy. They get the same fish reported multiple, many times was caught again in like a very short period. I mean, they are aggressive when something comes in their zone, they're going to eat it. But, um, the basic event information is here. You can see how to register in whatever division you want, whether it's individual team, micro bag, which is the five smallest, the Crescent Kids, and the, the Batteries Plus Sunday side pot tournament. And uh, Pete State Kayak Anglers also have a, a side pot. So there's, you can just check it out, guys. It's all on here, and uh, and that's the inside of the theater where we're going to be. And uh, big festival. It's you know Toyota truck demos, uh, you know, vendor booths, kids zone, bouncy houses. Uh, every bit of information you possibly need is right there on kayakadventureseries.com so it's Dang gonna man. be a good one oh, dude i'm excited yep. man i really am it's gonna be a yeah, good buddy. time i've already uh i've got signed up for sholey palooza i've already got my airbnb booked for whitehall michigan i'm about to pay the entry fee for that one and i mean dude if they, i can't it's wait man well and what's really cool especially about whitehall is i'm taking bethany the dogs and my mom and her dog. And we're like turning it into a week long vacation and just going to get out of town and That's go right. get us an Airbnb and chill. And what's fun about it is like all the events we do, 
like the the party we're going to do beforehand and all that oh, stuff. Yeah. Come to that stuff; they can enjoy that stuff. And the towns that we're going to are cool too, because like I got to look at the Whitehall, and it's just like a cool place. Like it's kind of oh, late, cool. like restaurants, like just cool yes. stuff. You know what I mean? Like stuff where you can like go and have fun. And like sometimes that's like the problem. It's like when we were in Cayuga last year uh, for the Hobie, like there's not jack squad up there. Like there was my right. hotel room and like a McDonald's and that was it. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like, yeah. It, I don't know. It, I just think it's cool to have stuff for people to do and, and be, yeah, be able to be family and all it'll that. It'll be but. fun. Yeah. That place is awesome, dude. We're actually going to go on a week of vacation too, after that to the upper peninsula. I've never been there. So I'm going to go check it out with the fam and relax after putting on that white hall event. But, um, yeah. yeah, you guys are going to love it, man. It's going to be a ton of fun and it's super laid back family friendly. So, and we got 55, 50, almost 60 probably registrations. And that's, yeah. that's probably 45 unique people. Cause there's some overlap between team and individual. Cause you can enter all, obviously all of the yeah. divisions, you don't have to yeah. just do one or the other. So yeah. we're getting close to probably hitting that mark and, and we're a couple weeks out, dude. Like, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's coming week. like quick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but a couple weeks out is to have that many people for kayak fishing, dude, yeah. that is like impressive. So I think we could hit, you know, yeah. 100, 150, 250 people. And, uh, obviously the bigger, more people, you know, the, the bigger the party. And, and I'm telling you right now, Alex and mark my words, you want to almost go live at, at the speakeasy uh, we go to for the after party. Yeah. The speakeasy is going to blow your mind. It's a secret spot in that town that you'll, you just won't actually believe what is in this town, this little town. When you walk in it, you will not understand it. If you are a sports fan, especially you're going to love what you see when you walk into the secret speakeasy. So, yeah. um, and if you want for moving to our next topic, I will say, I will announce something here that we really haven't announced yet. We okay. could, if we, that we just became, uh, you know, you can share my screen again. Actually, no, not that screen. I will, not that screen. Stop that. Not that screen. Do this one right here, and I'm going to announce something to you guys. Of Drew naked. They're really nice, though. I've, I've got to see those already. <laughs> oh, look at that thing. See you go. See this right here, guys? This is uh, Ubco, UBCO, and this is uh, uh, basically it's a, like an e-bike, but it's more like a, like a legit like <laughs> mini uh, motor, motorcycle, you know? Yeah. And why am I showing you guys this? Well, the winner, whoever wins Angler of the Year is going to win one of these bikes because they have come on board as a sponsor. And it's probably going to be, I'm sure you could upgrade, but it probably be like they have different divisions. This is a two by two hunt. That was the specialized. This is two by two adventure. It'll probably be like this one right here, the two by two work bike. Yeah. Um, you know, so it'd be, you could probably upgrade a little bit if you needed the, the mirrors and the turn signals and all the stuff the adventure has. But you can see, man, these things are pretty darn sweet. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be cool having, and they're like, they're five grand. I mean, someone's going to win this is five grand and the entire AOI package, um, is literally going to be like probably pushing 10 grand for, yeah, for, awesome. the, for the winter and the team of the year. We're, we're working on some cool stuff there. So that's, that's kind of a cool little, uh, yeah. announcement that I'm excited about. Yeah. And uh, we'll have some demos. I don't know if we're going to get them in time for the Sholy Palooza, unfortunately, but at every other event, Whitehall and all the rest, we will have, Two of them they're gonna they're given to us to use as demos at the festival. So you yeah. can demo a Toyota, demo one of these e-bikes, demo a kayak. You got all kinds of stuff you can hang out, test out, jump on the bounce house, push each jump. other in the bushes. And, I mean, and potentially, <laughs> if it works out, you may have something cold to jump into, but that you guys are gonna be finding out here before. Oh, too. that's true. That's true. That true. Ooh, and another tease. And there'll be opportunities to raise money for the Pump Foundation because Drew absolutely. Has nice enough this year to make the pump foundation one of the beneficiaries of the um the raffles that we'll be doing at each yep. one of the tournaments so just like we do raffles right. here friday night to raise money for the pump foundation uh kayak different kayak companies have given kayaks for us to raffle right. off in a bunch of different prizes and we're going to raise money for the pump foundation and all the money is going to go back into the pump foundation it's so. awesome dude i cannot wait for that that's i'm so excited about that Yep. And, uh, you know, kayak from like the first one is Crescent and then we go new canoe and then you got old town and feel free, uh, or sorry, well in order bonafide, then feel free. So appreciate yeah. all those brands, uh, coming together and the, you know, the sort of like unifying and coming together and just all like a family, like a paddle sports kayak fishing family joining together for this kayak adventure series presented by GoPro. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool, man. I can't wait to see how it goes. And it's going to, we've talked about this before on here. We know, I know I'm stressed as can be, even though I, I may not seem like it, whatever, but it's going to be a cluster. The first one is going to have oh. so much going on. I'm going to have to learn. And yeah. I've done some stuff like this. I ran the river bass and trail, but this is on a whole nother scale, dude, with everything that's happening, you know? So 
Hey, hey, it's going to be a cluster, but it'll be fun. We're going to screw it up. We're yes. going to fix it. We're going to screw it up again. We're going to fix it. And then, and then finally, there'll be one of them that just comes together. And when it does, oh, it's yeah. going to be beautiful. But listen, it will. It'll I'll be fun. Fact that we're already 20 minutes into this, and we've only done one underrated yeah. over. Totally out of order, but we're going to get on it. Let's um, go. Let's do it. Yeah, we're going to get probably through two underrated overrates. Then I got to ask you about winning <laughs> the Pike Classic because I want to talk That's to you true. about that. Day. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> underrated. Okay. First of all, let me back up. If you guys have never listened to the podcast before, if you're new to the live stream, I do this thing called underrated overrated. Essentially, I stole it from Gary V, and it's where I take a bunch of topics, both fishing and non-fishing, and we rate them. So you can either say underrated yeah. overrated, and then my guest and myself have to explain our rating for it. Um, all of our opinions are our own, and if you feel that you want to make your opinion your opinion our opinion, then feel free to do that because we're kind of smart guys. Well, at least I am. I don't know about Drew. All right, underrated. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> overrated asparagus. Ooh, dude, I'm going to say, well, when I was young, I could not stand asparagus. And I want to tell you right now, the ones in the can, they suck. I cannot stand those mushy ones in the can. Yeah. But that's... you get me a, like a legit asparagus growing out of my garden. Yeah. I'll go over there, crack that sucker and eat a ton of them. And yeah. they are good. Yeah. It's like Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts, when I was a kid, they – they were sucky. They were like bitter or they weren't good. And then all of a sudden they've kind of genetically continued to modify them a little bit to make, to take the bitterness out of them. That's a true story. You guys can yeah. back me up in the comments. They actually continue to, to make them. And there's a lot of foods that aren't really real natural, like broccoli and all this stuff that wasn't really, like really actually yeah. normal, natural. They can, but they made Brussels sprouts better. And I feel like asparagus, I've come around to it. Maybe it's like coffee when you get older, when you're a kid, yeah. you're like, what is that? That's disgusting. Your mom and dad are drinking. It smells horrible. And they're like, you want to throw up just at the smell of it. And now you just, you love it, you know? So I think when I was younger and in the can, it's totally overrated. It's actually worse than that. It's, it's hideous though in the, the trash, but now it's, uh, it's, it's underrated, man. Now it's, it's yeah. an excellent, excellent veggie fresh yeah. out of the garden. So yeah, I don't no. know. What do you think? I yeah, dude. I mean, I listen, I've never ate asparagus out of the can and nor will I ever eat asparagus out of a can. Asparagus is one of those things you got to eat fresh. Yeah. And dude, to me, <laughs> there's nothing better than like a good steak, a baked potato, and yeah. then like some asparagus seared in a pan with salt, pepper, garlic, a little bit of butter. Bro, like that right there. <laughs> totally, <laughs> totally underrated, bro. <laughs> so now, good. Now what about the after effects of asparagus? You know what yeah. I'm saying? You know yes. what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. You have piss that smells like <laughs> that you've got something wrong with you. And it's you just know. not Yeah, it's not good. First time, I don't think I ever realized, like the first time I ever ate asparagus and then I took a piss and I was like, oh my God, what is wrong with me? What have I done? Like I'm dying. <laughs> Dude, it's awful. Yeah. And then here's the worst part is I take a yeah. lot of vitamins. Like I'm a vitamin weirdo. Like I take a lot of, and my vitamins are potent to say the least. So yeah. my piss already looks like Mountain Dew. And then when you mix you when you mix vitamin Mountain Dew piss with the smell of asparagus, dude, you just get this <laughs> god awful conglomerate that every time you take a pee, you need to clean your toilet with bleach. And so yeah, no, that that is definitely overrated. Like that, the, might, yeah. that might be the scent formula that could actually <laughs> could actually work. <laughs> hey, look, the look, the that, could, that could actually work. That could be yeah. so potent. You put Let's, it on your uh your coal shad and dude, they're just like blah, 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 charging. <laughs> well, see, I'm gonna actually look this up. Why does pea smell after I... asparagus? All right, so when asparagus is digested, aspar aspar oh asparagus. I can't even say that word. Asparagus. Uh, Asparagistic acid gets broken down into sulfur containing byproducts. Sulfur is generally, or in general, is not very pleasant to smell. Right. Notes Dr. Bo Bobart. When you pee, the sulfur byproducts evaporate almost <laughs> instantly, causing the smell to be unpleasant. So essentially, when you eat asparagus, it makes sulfur in your urine and you pee out sulfur. Yeah. And you definitely find out how quickly, when you eat something, how quickly your body turns Proce it around you know what i mean i'm like whoa already you know what i mean i'm like smell i'm like oh man yeah, yeah processes that stuff quick so yeah. at least my metabolism it's like i eat asparagus and 10 minutes later i'm like go to the bathroom i'm like what in the world is that but anyway um uh, yeah that was a good one that was a good one so yeah, uh, poor uh, bethany so what's wrong I mean, she, says. <laughs> she said she said do not let that yellow mail yeah amen sister all right um <laughs> god underrated <laughs> overrated uh, Pools. 
pools? pools? Yeah, like a pool. Just, you know, above oh. ground, in ground, like like having a pool. Okay. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. This is a great one. Okay, so I've lived in the south and I've lived in the north, and you don't really need a pool up here. <laughs> I mean, it's like two months of the year you can use it. Yeah, it's totally overrated for up here. Yeah. But uh, I'd say definitely underrated back in the south because, dude. I mean, in North Carolina, when we had a pool in our house, we lived there for five years. I was in that thing every day from like April, let's say late April, early May, mm-hmm. every day. I'm doing yard work, whatever, sweating, just one dip in, right back out. I mean, I, and I always said to myself, I don't know how I've ever lived without a pool. I mean, just it's so refreshing. I mean, you're just you just feel like, I don't know, like a new person when you come yeah. in. It's so hot in the South, so humid. Yeah. I mean, dude, but obviously – they're expensive. Take a lot of work, man. It's not like easy to just keep up with that thing. And, and it yeah. was a lot. And then uh, having young kids, uh, I can't tell you how many times my son somehow got out of the dog door, got went through the dog door and, and we have a fence around our yard, but not, yeah, we have a fence around our yard, but the dog door goes out through our mudroom to the actual, you know, area that's fenced in. So yeah. we have it like protected. The pool's not just open where people walk over there and fall, kids can fall in. But anyway, next thing you know, I look out, I'm like, Oh my gosh, Theo's out there. You know, the dog door yeah. wasn't like locked. That's kind of scary. Dude. That's, that's a nightmare of mine. And, and I know my wife's too, just cause I mean, drowning is like the number one basically cause of deaths of your mm-hmm. children. You know what I mean? It really is. Cause they don't know what they're doing. They just like, go over there and they stumble in. And if you're not around, it's, it's game over, dude. It's, that's, yeah. it's very sad actually how many kids have, uh, that, t- like that. that took a very that took a very yeah that did. Turn. That did. But, like we were going and then it just <laughs> but underrated for me though in the south but uh, overrated up north you just don't you don't really need them up here. yeah uh, so and, so my mom's got a pool i've had a pool i mean i don't have a pool at my house but my my mom and my yeah. dad had a pool my whole entire life growing up and i have to say like when i was a kid highly highly underrated like you know dude's the yeah. pool everybody comes to the pool party you love to get in the pool i love to swim i'm a water weirdo yeah. like i love the water i'm the kind of guy that like you know some people get out of their kayak and they're like oh it's wet me i'm like let's dive in i don't care i'll get up to my nipples it doesn't bother me yeah. but but like as i've got older i've realized how expensive and how pricey and just like crap that goes wrong with pools and i'm just like Ugh. oh yeah it's, and then it's like it's overrated and it's like i don't know i feel like a pool is adequately rated i feel like a pool is yeah. almost like a boat like okay. i really really love my boat but then when i have to replace a thousand dollar part on my boat it's like okay i don't love my boat as much as i used to love my boat until you're back out on the water yeah. you're in your pool and then you realize yeah. how much you love your pool or your boat again so yeah that's true if i could if i knew we could adequately adequately rate i would have gone with that i, I would agree with you adequately rated Alec, yeah, adequately rated. This means it's middle of the road. It's middle of the road. All right. Yeah. Underrated, <laughs> overrated, Amazon. The company Amazon. Dude, that's a tough one. Um, gosh, do you ever go first on these? I got to go first. <laughs> I can go first. Uh, if you want to, I got to think about this one. Okay, that's fine. All right. So, Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. That's Amazon, tough. like four years ago, was underrated because two-day shipping actually existed now amazon is a little overrated because like two-day shipping is now turned into like five-day shipping i don't know what happened but like amazon does not deliver as fast as i used to even though we have an amazon facility here where i live like 20 minutes down the road and like you see the little amazon trucks running around all the time but I mean, I don't know. That being said, I still think they're underrated. I mean, you can buy literally anything on Amazon. You can have it at your door in a fairly adequate amount of time. I mean, like I, you know, it's usually cheaper than everything else. And God love Amazon. They're the king of knockoffs. And so they usually will knock off things, make them just as good as everybody else is making them, make them like $25 cheaper than whoever else it is. And so mm-hmm. I dig Amazon. I like it. You know, Jeff Bezos whatever he's into now wanting to go to the moon or be a evil genius or whatever he's doing yeah. multi-billion the thing about the thing about jeff bezos is that i don't know if he's going to be lex luther or if he's going to be batman and i'm kind of leaning towards lex luther and it kind of yeah. works me but yeah I'm yeah gonna go, yeah <laughs> i'm going to go underrated still because it's still amazon you can get anything from amazon yeah yeah i, I mean it is tricky that's the part do i separate what this 
mon- not, not really monopoly because other people do it, but basically the power and what they've kind of done. Uh-huh. Do you separate that Lex Luthor, your analogy there to that and what this is kind of doing to the world and other companies and stores and put, you know, how many people they've probably put out of business in there and they're getting all the business. Like, I, do you separate that from me and not you and not all of us and my wife, everyone loving it as the sense that you can just get something real quick, whatever you want. Yeah. And, and something feels a little bit off or wrong about Amazon. You guys ever feel this way? We live in such a crazy world that we're benefiting from thousands of years of humans, like building on the other humans, like technology. And it doesn't feel right. Almost. It hardly feels right going to the grocery store. When you understand the concept of, we used to have to run and chase down that, you know, animal to like feed our, our family and like hunt them or, or hide and like harpoon them or whatever, dude. This is why you're <laughs> my, one of my favorite guests. Because like, I, yes, I agree. Like my brain works the same. Like we're the ultimate rabbit holers together. Cause I'm, <laughs> dude, I'm the same way. Like I know, like, it's like, I'm sitting here and I get an Amazon package and I think, my great 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 grandfather right. was just shaking his head in disappointment as he speared a buffalo to death. You know what That's I mean? Right. <laughs> it just doesn't feel something feels a little bit like just doesn't feel right. It almost feels like we don't deserve this. I don't yeah. I feel like I don't deserve to have all this just stuff constantly and I can't keep up with it. And Lord knows technology has done so many good things, but it also has make it made us like Oh, you can do more now. You can be more efficient. So now you're like busier, busier, and busier, busier. Yeah. Back in the day, they're on the prairie, just chilling, like relax, yeah. enjoy life, low stress. Just, uh, uh, you know, we just wake up, we do the chores, we do the farm, have hang out, play, have some food, just go to bed. Like there's none of this other like stress and social media and, uh, you know, the anxiety that we all have these days, and especially our youth. You know what I mean? All the stuff, the emotional stuff we deal with because of all it's like, and there's pros and cons to it all, man. It's tough, but I'm going to say, and we, I don't know. I'm going to say it's, I'm going to still say it's underrated. Probably it, it it's just too, after, I, all, I am. That, after man, all that, my man goes, I still like my two days. <laughs> it, it is, it is, but I don't like what it does, what it has done to so many. I, I'm trying to separate yeah. what you said. You know what I mean? If I'm just talking well, about like how easy that is, it, it is nice. It's, it is it's a, a conundrum. conundrum. It's like, so we're sitting yeah. here, I'm sitting here talking to you on a MacBook. And most likely the lithium that's in the battery of this MacBook was mined out of the ground by some poor kid who got his hand cut off because he didn't mind enough out. And then the cobalt, you know, there's people killing each other over the cobalt that we need to combine with the lithium to make these batteries. And it's like, you know, it's one of those things. It's like it's 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 the. uh it's the duality of, of the American person, because in one hand, yeah. they, they scream, they scream like social justice. And on the other hand, they're carrying around yeah. an iPhone made by slave yeah, labor. It's exactly. Like, it is, man. With it. You know what I mean? But we yeah, don't. we're all like you. Like Crescent's a good example. And all the, the U.S. kayak manufacturers we got on board in, in the series. And we love that U.S. thing. And we do. But at the same time, like you said, we, we all I mean buy whatever is the cheapest when other items that we're not as informed about whenever it's something like it's our hobby. We all debate about, you know, these China knockoffs and everything going on with the fishing world, because that's what we know. So we choose to kind of like say, well, I'm going to promote and support like these U S you know, lure manufacturers or whatever it is and not, and it gets, we get serious, but we don't know anything about other things, the clothing or the electronics or where in the world, any of that stuff. And we don't care. It's not like our obsession like this is. So Mm -hmm. we are kind of speaking out of both sides of, our mouth in some ways, but you can't have, who has time to figure out where all this stuff is made. And, and you know what I mean? Like it's tough. Uh, yeah. And then the other part is you can't, because of the way that the world works with business and the way it's structured right now. And, and like you said, labor costs, and everything else there's, you can't compete with the certain like uh, industries. You cannot make it in the U S and yeah. actually have a product that anyone in the U S would even buy at the yeah. price point. It would have to be can't, mm-hmm can't do it so you got to go overseas so it's like it you know it's it's tricky man uh it's a tough one for sure dude i'm telling you yeah all right all right no so we got three more let's take an intermission i want you to tell me about your win so let's back up drew gregory otherwise known as greg drury (laughs) i forgot about that yeah (laughs) Greg, um, I mean, uh, I mean, Drew, um, Drew just happened to win 
the Bassmaster Classic yeah. Kayak Championship on Lake Ten Killer, taking a kayak and <laughs> doing kayak stuff with it, buddy. It was cool, man. Tell me, yeah. tell me about the win. Just give me like the ten thousand foot view yeah. of what happened that week and and how it went down. I mean, basically just fish. Why I got into kayak fishing, you know, went to the shallow, skinny water, rivers, creeks, backwaters, but there was a, a river feeding it. And I just knew from the beginning that it was where I was going to go. It's been on my bucket list, Illinois river. I know it's got big fish, just like the lake does 10 killers got giants in it. Um, mm-hmm. and it's got the right kind of smallmouth they, they stocked in there and, and, uh, they live in that river. And I was surprised how big the largemouth got, but man, I just went up that river and, um, I found it on Friday. So the, the quick little story here. Friday in practice, or sorry, the uh, Saturday, it was the first day of our practice because our tournament was Wednesday, Thursday. Mm-hmm. Saturday, the first day I got there to practice, that I got there midday, and I went to the ramp where the river was. If you listen to any podcasts I've been on, probably not because you're like me. You don't, I don't listen to like a lot of other yeah, yeah. stuff. I don't the time. Yeah. I do listen to some fishing stuff, but not like – I probably assumed you were having me on. We, you probably hadn't listened to it. So I went to the ramp. And first they pre-fish and I, there's a, like a dirt road that goes to the left and then there's a ramp and the left is upstream. So I take the dirt road, put that four wheel drive, you know, Tacoma in gear and go to the dirt roads. Cause it's further upstream. And I know I'm, I want to go and start fishing several miles upstream because I, yeah. I figure that in the first few miles are going to get beat up by all the other anglers pre-fishing. They're going to launch to the ramp. They're going to fish their way up two, three miles, come back. Right. So mm-hmm. I started way up, but basically I went and, and drove down the four wheel drive road and launched as far up as I could in that, you know, that public access area and uh, kind of hid my truck in the, in the woods there and fished my way up, caught 91 and a half inches in about four hours, uh-huh. realized they're here. I got to like begin. Now I got to figure out how to get to them because as the Bassmaster rule state, you got to be able to float in and out. Right. Uh-huh. So now I got to make, and I got to be able to, you know, I can't get out, can't get out in portage or do anything like that. So I had to figure out there's some steep, you know, inclines or whatever for the, the riffles and the rapids there, they're like steep and they're just like a San Francisco street. Sometimes they're just like steep, man, the waters and it's shallow. I mean, it's, gets like, you know, real shallow. So like 10, 10 inches. So I had to, at that point, the rest of my practice, the next day was spent rigging that torpedo up to where I could go as fast as possible. I used to go 6.2 in the Sholey and now mm. I'm going 6.6.7. So mm. I got to go 6.7 by making adjustments with the trim and uh, the height of it and the pitch of it and the weight distribution in the kayak. Cause I knew I needed every bit of speed I could to get up some of this very swift stuff. Mm-hmm. And cause it just kind of all narrows up, you know what I mean? And, and mm-hmm. it's just racing. So with the pop- proper paddle form and the torpedo on high, I could get up that stuff and obviously being able to read water to know which way and when to go left and if when to ferry and go left and right and go up the different current seams. So now I knew I've got a setup that most likely most people can't get to the fish that I could get to. Uh-huh. And, uh, so the rest of practice was spent launching at for places further upstream and fishing water that, I mean, I was as far up as 15 miles, which I would never get to in the tournament. Yeah. But cause I, even though I had a lot of torpedo batteries, I borrowed, I had seven total, but I only used like four or five on the boat at one time, yeah. but they're like, they're like 29 amp hours. So they're not like, it'd be yeah. like having two, 100 amp hour batteries basically, but they're small. Like, so you have to kind of pile a bunch of them. So I had to borrow a bunch because this is all thought out as, as you can tell way, way in advance. Like wow. this is like nine months in advance of like prep. Right. So then I go um, and just fish upstream and I floated back down to as far as I got upstream that first day. So I could continue, never mm-hmm. miss a section to know I can make it all the way. How far can I make it right in tournament mm-hmm. day and still be legal. Right. Mm-hmm. So I get up there. I'm 15 miles. I knew I, I could go up to 15 miles. I would never get there. But once I was 15 miles up, I just started fishing to learn how to catch them in the river. Cause I'm not want to, don't want to beat up my fish. Right. Mm-hmm. Cause I know I'm going to fish, you know, a few miles up from a few miles up from that ramp, uh, which is the designated launch we had to use on the river that the farthest North on the, the lake on the river, if you will. Mm-hmm. So I, I fished, my, you know, that whole section and kind of learned it. And then um, on tournament day, uh, and it was uh, it was hard, man, because Alex, you talk about, you know, we stayed at these Airbnbs and I'm staying with about eight guys and we were right five minutes from the river, our uh, house was. And it was, you had to pass our house to go to that launch. Mm-hmm. So I'm watching all the best anglers and man, that Bassmaster Kayak Series has the best anglers these days in the country, man. And I have to watch all of them drive by this house as I'm rigging and, you know, and leaving when they leave the ramp every day, and like you're, you know, you're really good river anglers like Russ and Matt Ball and Jody Queen, and you know, just really, really good 
river anglers. And it's made me nervous that they're all finding the same fish, right? Uh -huh. John Dalton stayed with me, you know, Creek Fishing Adventures. He, he's in the house, Steve Baker. But on tournament day, I noticed they went, most people went to the river on the two worst days of weather, post front, windy, bluebird. Uh -huh. And they, when I showed up there on tournament day one, it was me and Steve Baker. That was uh -huh. it. Mm -hmm. nobody else and i could we could not believe it because he obviously found figured him out and found him too and uh but i think they just went on the wrong weather days and they just didn't really like catch them and or they didn't have a setup that could really get up to the stuff that i could or get further and they realized they can't go that far so they're going to go find something else but basically i just went and caught 90 inches on day one uh most of them are large mouth and a slew uh and, and one big small mouth a 19 and a half at the very end of the day with 30 minutes to go Day two, I caught a uh, big bass of the tournament. It was a 22 incher, the first fish on in a slew, like a six and a half pounder. Which, uh, if you want to, oh, you can show that video. Have you ever seen it? The mm -hmm. video of it yet? yet? Oh, you got it. This is great. I'm loving that you're getting this all fresh, man. Yeah. The, Dude, uh, don't, you, don't you know that, like, it was like, <laughs> I don't want to bring this back up, but greatest story with Drew was I text him and go, Hey, you still good for the live stream tonight? He's like, No, bro. Did you not hear that I got disqualified from the, what, whatever? Uh, yeah. what last year and i was like no and he's like yeah I'm, I'm like put like i'm like you know going back against it right now they're like doing a review of it i was like oh he's like you really don't pay attention to anything do you i was like and you're like oh, nope i don't <laughs> i got reinstated i was reinstated he yeah won. i got reinstated i ended up winning but because i was able to prove that i didn't break the rule but just horsing her out dude this slow down just straight braid. I'm about to go snowboarding afterwards. Yeah, no fuck that. <laughs> oh shit! Well, that lamp spray on her too. That's crazy. Yep. Yep. Project Z chatterbait. Yeah, that yeah, that lamp spray, dude. Oh, and that's the slew. Where you can see that behind me there. That's the slew. That's a back cut. The largemouth live in the inches. sloughs. Smallmouth are more in the main river in the clear. Oh, that's a great way to start tournament. Warning on final day, Fastmaster Pack Series Championship. But anyway, that was a beauty. That's awesome, dude. So that was the, uh, and then the last one I'll show you was, well, if you guys are liking the uh, visuals. Yeah. The uh, actually, I'll show people listening on podcast form, essentially Drew just caught a six pounder on a uh, on a chatterbait wearing ski goggles. Anyway, go on. I'm sorry. Yeah, actually, the 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 fish that I did uh, land on day one. This one here, uh, you should show this one. This is a 19 and a half that called me up with 30 minutes to go, and I'm only showing it for a couple reasons. First of all, I do own a spinning rod. Look at that. It's from 1995, so, but you yeah, won't. Yeah, <laughs> I do. So I got one and a reel and uh, eight pound test, you know, bluebird it's sky is clear. I knew I needed, I had that Z Man Gobi song. It looks like, a, you know, like basically like a dark sleeper sort of thing, but it looks like a river darter. You know what I mean? Those river oh, yeah, darters yeah. we see yeah. all the time. Stop, stop, stop. You so. I, this is a long fight. I loosen my drag and it's open water. So, but I'm always holding my spool. So if they go somewhere, I don't want them to go. I can just cut the spool, even though the drag's really loose and just pull and they're not going to like go. But I want to say something real quick, man. Don't ever do this guys. Uh, don't ever do this right here. And I, and I just freaked out. I mean, honestly, it's, it's the, it's the pressure of the tournament, the situation. And, uh, she's going under law right here. And so I grabbed the line and you never should do this guys. I should have just kept her, kept going with that rod, and I grabbed the line, just freaking out. And the bait falls out. Watch this bait fall out right when I belly her. Falls right out of her mouth. Oh my god! Oh my god! Dude. The gobies just fell out. Oh, oh my god! god. That, that was crazy. You can see it just fall right out, dude. So just use the net. I should have grabbed mine. Oh my god! The gobies just fell out. On spinning rods. Oh my god! But uh, oh but uh, you can see her here. It's just beauty. Oh. Uh, um, but you got to listen. I got to I gotta share this one part with you, Alex. Because you're going to get a kick out of it. Uh, hang on. Right. Right here. Because I'm a dad. I can make dad jokes. So yeah. here we go. Listen to this. <laughs> so, on the so Gobius. stupid. Let's go, BS. That's this is kind of stupid dad joke. Anyway. All right. So, but I like that bait. It's it's worked out yeah. well. No, but, um, but the... Um, the Zal Dangerous swim bait caught me a big one. I first, first, third cast, I threw it. So after I caught that big one on day two, that 22 yeah. incher, you guys just have to see this this fish here because it's a freak. It's like almost a six pound smallie. So again, if you are an audio listener, you need to go back and watch this on yes, yes. YouTube. So get double 
double the views for Mr. Alex right here. So I turned the GoPro on right after she bit. I threw it up against that log. I lose my, I lose my paddle. My Just pause this for a second. Yeah, you I have a question. Do yeah. you do you talk out loud? Like, okay, if the cameras weren't running, would you still talk out loud to yourself like this? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah do you? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. Wondering. See, yeah. I'm the world's worst because, you know, like most people who make content, like they do a really good job of being like, oh, my God, it's a giant. It's a giant. Me, when I hook a big fish, dude, I go stone quiet. cold. I'm like. Focus. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> and the only thing I'll say, like, if somebody's with me, I will be like, like always, Josh, it's a big one. And I'm just like, yeah. and then once I get my hand on it, I'm like. Uh, and then it, it all falls apart after that. Anyway, <laughs> let's get this. Let's watch. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, watch my paddle don't float jump, away. Don't jump, don't jump. So not good. that's not fun. <laughs> oh, I got a motor. Go. I got a motor, so I'm all good. But come on, girl. Don't this jump, jump right here is oh, just epic. Uh, I barely can even get out of the water. She's so big. For a small mouth, that's a, you know. Dude, that's crazy. This different nut. Oh yeah, it's it's great. Anyway, that's yeah, it was a giant. I mean, I got a picture if you guys want to see it and, and the yeah, video from the other from the other angle, I can show it to you. No, I want to see it. that thing's tail, bro, is oh, like yeah, both big. of my hands put together. Like that's huge. All right. Give me uh I'll pull up the pictures because I got a bunch of pictures for pre-fishing too. Yeah, we can just quickly scrub through them if you guys want to see them. But they're um but man, it was a bit to say this real quick while I'm finding these pictures, the uh the, the guys at Bassmaster, man, Steve Owens and his team did an unbelievable job. And they actually put that video. I edited that big uh, largemouth yeah. video, that one that you guys just saw. And they put it on the screen during the awards at the in the arena in Tulsa for the Bassmaster Classic, you know, the stage yeah. we were on. It, it was a little mini kayak adventure series. You know what I mean? Like yeah. people got to watch that video behind me, you know, yeah. while uh, I was talking with Steve. And, man, it was, it was just a really cool for them to be able to, like, yeah, we're on it, you know, and they put it on the yeah. screen. They're just doing such a good job with that Bassmaster Kayak series. Yep. And uh can't thank them enough for just all they do for us. Heck yeah, dude. And there's the uh pictures if you guys want to see. Uh let me actually hit the right share screen, my entire screen, and you can take it from there. Sounds good. All right, there we go. There we go. Now I got my entire screen up. Yeah. Take that. Just gotta go. There you go. You see those? Oh, yeah. So that was the large mouth. I'll, I'll flip them real quick. That's me measuring the small mouth. Uh, but 21 and a quarter. That's her breaching right there, right by the boat when I was trying to oh, land her. 21 and a quarter. I think almost six. Um, Timmy Dixon just caught a real fat one that was, if you saw, if you know Timmy Dixon. But uh, on the New River, it was 21 and a quarter, and it was six something, six eight or six something. So that's that was her. It's just a, a freak. And I, there was some real big ones there. But that's what I, I like that photo there just because you can see how big – her lips are like the bones. You know what I mean? Like it looks like a carp. And when a fish looks like that, dude, a small mouth, mm -hmm. you know, it is a just freak. freak. Yeah. yeah. And so that was pretty cool. But uh, that's another shot of it. But, and that's her jumping. Just, I mean, it was just unreal to have that happen in a tournament. Mm -hmm. And I think that was probably the second biggest fish of the event. If not, it was close to it. So to catch the biggest bass and then the second biggest, I mean, it was pretty darn cool. Uh, and I only won by a couple inches, you know, over Guillermo oh. who had an awesome tournament and Bennett. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, we, we can get on with the overrated underrated, but oh, you're good. Plenty, no, plenty no. more pictures. If, if you guys want to see them sometime, but well, you can my it, was, it was river fishing one on one. I mean, it was getting yeah. up in, the river in flowing water, throwing a chatterbait, a big swim bait. Well, yeah, what else, what else actually, you... the only fish I caught on the chatterbait was that one fish. That was oh, it because no. I didn't throw it a lot because the the river's crystal clear. Mm. So you either have to go finesse like that gobius there, and it's fifty. Here's the problem: it's fifty five. It's low fifties in the morning. Got up to like probably fifty five ish, mm -hmm. and it, you know earlier before we were there, there was a warm front and it was in the sixties before we kind of got in there and a cold front hit. Baby, by the end of the day, it was like hitting like fifty six, fifty seven. Mm -hmm. I could handle cold water like that cool water if it's murky mm -hmm. and i can it's you know what i mean but to have both be cold and you know what i mean and clear it was tough and so you either got to go you know real small like that and finesse which it did on day one but day two in the clouds you notice with that I, I said or real big with mm -hmm. that swim bait because now i had cloud cover and some wind i said oh they're gonna hit this swim bait hopefully once it got starts getting 55 57 degrees and they mm -hmm. did but i caught most of my fish on practice with the spinner bait 
Oh. And the warmer, one of the warmest days that we had, like I said before, on that you know Friday and Saturday, it was real warm. I uh -huh. got there on Saturday, so they were like just chewing that moving stuff. So uh -huh. on tournament day in that slough, a little tip for you guys, even though I fished there four days before the tournament or whatever it was on Saturday and our tournament started Wednesday, I did not throw the spinnerbait. And I only caught a couple on that spinnerbait and left, you know what I mean? Left it alone. I threw the jig right when I knew they were going to be, and they hammered it. Or I threw a... Uh, well, I threw the spinnerbait in areas that I didn't pre-fish that were further back in the slough that I hadn't seen it mm. yet. So mm -hmm. I threw the jig in the spinnerbait, but I would always throw the jig anywhere I'd caught them in practice to give them a different look. And I actually caught, I'm pretty sure I caught the same fish in practice that I did in the first day of the tournament, a 19 and three quarter inch largemouth because it came on the exact same spot. And in mm -hmm. practice, it measured 19 and a half. And I wasn't really like trying to get every little bit out of it. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty darn sure it was the same fish. So, but, mm. but that was it. It was the gobius, sort of like a little something like that. Uh, you know, and a spinner bait, you know, and a jig, and then that one big swim bait. And that was kind of it. Yeah. So it was a little mixed. mixed it's kind of so. crazy. Like, I love the fact, like, I, I started figuring it out a couple years ago, but like with that six inch swim bait, whether it's the dangerous or it's a cold shad or whatever you like to throw, but like a lot of people think like that's way too big for a, a river or a creek. Bro, they will come completely <laughs> on that thing. I don't know they if will. it's because. They don't see stuff like that often or what it is, but golly, I cannot tell you how many fish from this big yeah, to that yeah. big just it pulls come them. completely unglued on that thing. But no, nah, dude, true. Thank you, bro. I, congratulations, man. And thank you. you buddy. Thank you, uh, Dale and everybody else in the comments. Who's, yeah. who's I see congratulations and, uh, uh, and, and it's pretty cool, man. Um, yeah. He says, you know, what a statement went after the previous, previous controversy. You silenced the doubters. That's cool. I mean, if there were any, sure, I, you know, I'm not, I can't control that, but yeah, I mean, I'm, there could have been, but uh, I mean, I was fourth in AOI last year, the first year when they made the rule changes that some people attribute to me, which I don't really understand anyway, because I never got out of my kayak. I never launched anywhere that wasn't public. So I don't mm -hmm. think they changed the rules for, because of me per se, but definitely people call it the Drew rules uh, and that whatever. I mean, you know, if they do, but anyway, so if there's any doubters, I, you know, after last year's fourth, you know, with that, with the new rules and, and this year, I guess, you know, maybe they were silenced, but what you need to you do, you can't worry about them, dude. You just you need to change your, you need to change your name on Tony X to Greg Drury and then nobody <laughs> will know it's you and you can just That's fish right. with the problems. All right. Underrated. Exactly. There we go. Overrated. This is going to be a good one. Cause we just got done talking about this kayak motors, underrated, overrated. Well, dude, you know what? Because people think, because all my other like wins and AOI, even when motors were allowed in the series, I didn't use them. I just, I just didn't use it because I wanted the advantage of being able to launch places, you know, kayaks launch that are public that we could do back then. And, and, uh, the motor guys were kind of restricted to the boat ramps mostly, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they didn't want to deal with going and carrying the batteries and the motor and all that down a bridge and just the, mm -hmm. the hassle of that. So I fished that way and it worked great. So you might think that I'd be like, Oh, that's, you know, they're overrated, but, but once you have a motor, like a Torquedo and you realize how shallow I got that Torquedo to draft and suck and chew full, you know, full amount of water it needed to, to go 6.7 miles an hour and about seven, eight inches of water, maybe, hmm. maybe nine. I don't know, but it was, it was shallow dude. And I would just be going full board thinking, how is this thing still, you know, going full speed at this, this, how shallow it was. And that you can just cover so much like more water even in a river float trip or whatever you want to do, if you know, and you go back up. So it was just, it is nice, man. The older you get to, maybe that has something to do with it. I mean, I, yeah. I love the exercise and I still get it because I'm using my paddle in conjunction yeah. with the motor all the time. And I'm yeah. casting my face off out there like nonstop. So I'm getting plenty of exercise, but, yeah. uh, but I think it's, yeah, I think it's still like underrated because I don't think until you have one that can go as powerful as like that 1103 for Torquedo and does what it does and can get you and hold you and current and stuff. And it's, and in it, you can use your feet. So you're just casting and fishing the whole time. It's like, mm -hmm. whoo, man, it can still go in all the wild places. I love to fish. So mm -hmm. because of that, yeah, still underrated, man. Oh, dude. I, awesome. I 100% agree, dude. Uh, completely underrated. I, I always tell yeah. people the number one upgrade, like there's always people quite like they'll leave a comment live scope or a motor for my kayak and i'm like get a motor for your kayak like dude it's a game changer and i hate to use that term because it's overused yeah. but like i got i've obviously got the the new port on the on the hobie with the foot steering and like dude the foot steering alone with yep. in conjunction with the motor like you said just cool. being able to go up a bank and fish hands free 
dude is yeah. it's awesome and like it's just expanded my range i'm not like completely exhausted by the end of the day and like next i'm gonna have to throw one on the shoulder because like dude yeah. you know I mean, right now my shoulder <laughs> dude, currently my shoulder is literally that poor boat i still we got to get our boats out and compare them when i get down there to georgia we're gonna just like we're gonna put our boats on display we're gonna do them bottom up and we're just gonna yes. let mine look how much you can beat up a shoulder without tearing it up but yeah, yeah. dude i mean highly yeah, for, underrated. highly under it yeah for lakes yeah. if you're a lake angler uh, in a kayak it's like I mean, I'm talking about you can get away with fishing in a river and creek without it for sure and and, and do float trips from point A to point B and paddle. But, man, if you're a lake angler, kayak angler, I mean, it's not even underrated or overrated. It's almost like it's a must because I don't know how you can like, oh, I got to go, especially if you're a tournament angler. Let's say that if you're a tournament angler, because if it takes you 15, 20 or a half hour to paddle a mile and you're just going to go straight paddle and you don't have any time constraints, you got to like catch fish in a certain time. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's going to still like, you know, waste your time on fun fishing day, but man, in a tournament, if you're a tournament kayak angler and you fish the lakes primarily, uh -huh. dude, it's not underrated or overrated. It is a must. Yeah. Like, it's just yeah. a must. Like, you well, can't, that's the thing I is mean, like, so like, that's what kind of what's cool. Okay. So next week I'm, t I'm bringing the Sholey. I'm doing yeah. kayak fishing stuff, taking the kayak, doing kayak fishing stuff, right? I'm going Sholey fishing. Like we're going to go do that. Yeah. But like most of the tournaments I fish that are local, they're all on big lakes. And like, yeah, there's some of the rivers are available sometimes, but for the most part, you're talking about like Watts bar, Chickamauga, <laughs> like these giant lakes that, yeah, sure. I could go find something up in some Creek somewhere and have mm -hmm. fun doing that. But coming from a dude who fished out of a bass boat for a majority yeah. of his life, like I know where a bunch of good stuff is that I can get on to in a lake. Bike. And so throw a motor on the back of my kayak and then I can go do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, dude. Yeah, bro. Like yeah. I, it's, I, I love my motor. I, on my, I love my motor on my hobby as much as I love the ability to take the Sholey and float a Creek that that it's that. Deep. Yeah. So, yeah. And you know, what's crazy and what's we should bring up right now is to the whole world can we just say that like, like this it's okay to like and accept all of the above there's nothing wrong we don't need to like pick sides why does everyone in the fisher world think they gotta pick sides about topics you know what i mean like you can you don't have to pick sides it can even if you don't do it like i don't live scope but i don't hate on the ones who do i don't care it doesn't bother me i'm happy that they're happy out in the water and fishing you know what i mean like how they enjoy fishing they're, they're enjoying it so you know, we don't have to pick sides one bit. Let's just accept everyone. That's kind of what that kayak adventure series is really all about. Just a format that lets anybody in any style, which we've talked about ad nauseum on your show. It's mm -hmm. the UFC. It's mm -hmm. whatever style you want, motor, not motor, lake, river, creek, mm -hmm. all that waters and bounds, simple, just mm -hmm. a paddle, two rods, float mm -hmm. a river, float a creek, wade, portage over stuff. Dude, it's, it's the UFC. It's like, yeah, let's just see who comes out of this octagon that we've created, which is basically an hour radius from, you know, the host location, host city, the theater, and just see what, see what happens. Cause variety is the spice of life, man. And we've got a lot of cool variety in, in kayak fishing. So still me and John, you still got to watch out. We're coming for everybody. Yeah. All right. Underrated, yeah. overrated, the trick worm. Just the OG yeah. six. Uh, yeah. The zoom trick worm. worm. Yep. Yeah. I actually like this question because I power fish straight, you know, that like a lot of single hook baits and just moving baits. And so people might think I'm going to say this is kind of overrated because I don't use it. But to be honest, man, like for fishing in general, bass fishing in general, because I know not everyone fishes the way I do with all this moving baits and fast. Not, not everyone's as spastic and ADHD as I am. So I get it. But back in the day, bro. Yeah, <laughs> well, some of us, you okay, but yeah. back in the day, this <laughs> listen, like people all the time, they're like, I literally had a guy comment the other day, and I've been meaning to address this for a hot minute because <laughs> it cracked me up. He was like, You've become a one dimensional angler, Alex. All you do is fish moving baits. I'm like, Bro, it's never, I've never not fished a moving bait, and even when I'm fishing like a wacky rig or something, I'm like, Throw it to a target, nope, throw it to the next target, nope, throw it to the next target, like, like yeah, yeah. I, yeah, bro, no, yeah, yep. I, I power fish, that's what yes. I do. And, and flipping and punching is power fishing dude it's like it's not slow it's like pitch it in pull it out pitch it in you know punch the mat boom pull it out next one but yeah i mean there, there's no doubt that uh the trick worm is here's why i think i feel like i'm, I'm probably going underrated on everything tonight pretty much but maybe not 
Um, but the, the trick worm is actually underrated because people forget how versatile it was. When I fished it a lot, it's uh, it was weightless as well is amazing but uh -huh. you know what it's incredible on a carolina rig it just floats uh -huh. back up there and that tail does its thing it's incredible on a shaky head you want uh -huh. a little bit, bit bigger profile bigger longer it's a texas rig it's actually you could i'm back in the day we weren't doing as much wacky rigging when i was learning techniques but you could probably wacky rig the dang thing and crush them on that too it's actually probably underrated for all that it can do uh -huh. so i would say underrated no nah, yeah I, I don't disagree bro underrated for absolutely certain and like Back in the day, surprise, surprise, um, before I was on YouTube, before I put all my stuff out into the world, dude, a black trick worm on a 3 16th ounce shaky head was my absolute go-to bait. I caught a ton of fish on it. I mean, and it is just a bite getter and a fish catcher. And I've caught them 14 inches all the way. The biggest fish I ever caught on a black trick worm on a 3 16th ounce shaky head was a seven and a half pound largemouth. I mean, so, dude, it gets big bites. It and does. Dude, it's, you know, I think it's one of those things, like, too, a lot of people – you know, we talk about this a lot is like baits have like ebbs and flows, right? They have times mm -hmm. that they're really popular and they have times when they kind of die away. Now, I don't think the trick worms ever truly like died away, but I think a lot of people overlook it now for all the different worm yeah. options we have. And I think they like do. going back to some of the like I find myself going back to some of the most simplistic ways of fishing and I'm getting bites when other people don't. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like and we're like you know, spinner baits, trick worms, stuff yep. like that. You know, and I, I don't know, dude. I, I think it, I think a trick worm is going to make a comeback. Maybe if people start fishing, so. they don't. You know what think, I mean? Yeah, exactly. Think about yeah. a Nico. You can Nico it. You could uh, drop shot it. And you might think drop shot. You mostly think about little small yeah. stuff. But but man, like think about what Brandon Polinick did that time. He was fishing brush piles. I think it was on Santee Cooper. Mm -hmm. You know, he's drop shot like drop shotting big largemouth in brush piles in these southern lakes or anywhere really but you know, these southern reservoirs especially you want a bigger profile you don't want to sit there and drop shot something dinky because the water is usually a little stained sometimes and some of these lakes like st cooper was so he uses this bigger i don't it wasn't a, a trick worm obviously he's with exo and it was probably something but you want a bigger profile when you're throwing for some big large mouth and if you're going to drop shot them in a around brush then that's what you want dude so it could be used in any way and that's why i think it's yeah it's underrated oh and do one of my favorite ways is a floating worm Yes, a, that's, like a methylate orange or a I was going to say, that's John yeah. from Creek Fishing Adventures. You know, he's going to sit there and throw that creamsicle trick worm, <laughs> just like he throws his creamsicle helgramite, literally or whatever I, else. He's talking to him, I went fishing with him yesterday, and I was talking to him, and I was like, you know, I think I'm going to take X Y Z down to Georgia with me, and you know, take this just to make sure I got it. Blah blah. He's like, yeah, I'm probably just going to take a. You know, uh, I'm going to take a yum danger and a halgramite and a spinner bait. And I'm like, yeah, I figured that's probably all you were going to take. Like, and you're probably going to beat our eyeballs in with a yum danger, <laughs> a halgramite, and a damn spinner bait. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's funny, man. We uh, we went to Wendy's the other day. The kids were just going crazy. And we, like, needed to pull over and get them something. And, you know, yeah. probably wasn't the greatest thing to go get them a bunch more sugar. But anyway, they were getting, like, crazy. And I said, all right, fine. We'll, let's go get some – go get a Frosty. Yeah. And they had a cream sickle flavor new creamsicle fr flavored frosty yeah and i tell you now every time i see that creamsicle anything i, I think of that helga and john dalton every <laughs> time i see creamsicle anything so the, yeah funny. creamsicle creamsicle listen and pragco if you're listening right now yum baits if you're listening right now i'm just going to go ahead and put it out there in the universe first of all it is a travesty that you've not paid that man more than you pay him second of all not that i know what he gets paid but it's a travesty <laughs> that you don't pay him more than you pay him. And and number three, the fact that you probably had to make a whole nother uh, mold just to pour enough cr creamsicle yum dingers to keep <laughs> up with demand and then had the audacity to introduce a Helgramite bait and make it in creamsicle and still not put the man's name on it. I just don't even know what to say to y'all. Yum. Get, be need better. to name a color, at least a color. I mean, come on. I a mean, bait would be great. Really? But yeah. a color, just you know, let's they let's have them. John should make color. a new color. Yeah, it should yeah, be yeah. uh creek. It should be creek sickle. That's the new color, dude. Creek yes. sickle. Creek. He just goes in there and John, you tweak it a little bit because again, it's got to be different enough than cream sickle. Yeah. Tweak yeah. it to what you think would be better than cream sickle, and yeah. let's call it creek sickle. Yeah, and let's let's get the man. Give that man a royalty off every single one of them <laughs> things. All right, all right. Last one. Here we go. You ready? Let's do it. We're in the middle of it right now season is in full swing people are absolutely obsessed with these little boogers and i 
listen, I think they're cool. I always have. Um, but I don't I don't know what you're gonna say. Underrated, I don't know, overrated turkeys. Wild oh, turkeys. Turkeys. You're talking like hunting them or just like yeah, in general just, them. Yeah, turkeys, you know, hunting them, I guess, because we're right in the middle of the season. Like everybody's yeah. obsessed with everybody's turkey hunting, but like turkeys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, here's what's funny is so I know so many people who just are obsessed with it the same way they are with bass fishing. You know, they'll take off this time and I've just never gotten into it because I'm too busy. This is like the spawn and the best time to fish. And I just never like gotten into that. Yeah. And uh, I mean, we squirrel hunted and a little bit of deer hunting when I was a kid, but just kind of took, fell in love with the fishing side. So I've never really done it, but they all, everyone tells me that waterfowl, like turkey hunting or any waterfowl is mm-hmm. so much similar to what we do in the fishing world, right? You're very mm-hmm. interactive with, you know, the calling the birds in and all that stuff. So I've never had a chance to do it, but I love wild turkey. Like, you know, we'll be driving. We love animals, man. Everyone yeah. in my family, my wife and I, that's just one of the things we bond over. And, and, uh, and so anything like a hawk or an eagle, anything we're looking at all the time. She loves taking photos of owls and she brings her long lens whenever yeah. we're on the water and just places she we've hunted owls. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All the time. She, and so turkeys are one of those things too. It's like, we see wild turkeys. It's like, Oh, turkeys, turkeys. We're just checking yeah. them out and we love watching them and checking them out. But I mean, I don't know if I really have a, an opinion on Cause the hunting thing, if we're talking more about that, I don't really know, but in general, I actually think they're probably overrated in terms of just seeing them or whatever. Like they're just, it's like a baby that's, you know, like how women love the babies when they're a year old and six months yeah. old and yeah. two months old. And then I'm just like, it just sits there. Like it, you just hold it. It just pees and poops and it just doesn't do anything. It's like a Turkey. I'm like, yeah, we see turkeys over there. Cool. They're just sitting ducks. They just sit there. They don't do hardly yeah. anything. They're just standing in the field. Wandering yeah. around. Burp, 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 doing, I mean, yeah. that's kind of overrated. They're kind of just like a, uh, I'd say a, a three month old baby. They're just, <laughs> they're, they're not that pretty and neither and is the three month old baby. And yeah, they're not that smart. Yeah, they're yeah. not. And so that's all goes just with the baby analogy. They're not smart. They're not pretty. And they don't really do anything. They just peck around and, and mill around. And they, every once in a while you get them to fly. And that's kind of cool. Like across the river or a creek, you know, like, oh, wow, it's turkey. But yeah. they don't just do anything. So kind of overrated on turkeys. But the hunting them is probably people are going to say underrated, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Now, any so any animal that you've got to call in is highly yeah. underrated as far as like hunting them. Dude, like I love coyote. I love to kill coyotes. And that's what I love about coyotes is like you call them in and they poke their head out and you blow their head off. It's great. But anyway, <laughs> so fun fact, Benjamin Franklin wanted the turkey to be the national bird of the United States. But you didn't know that. Did yeah. not know that. For the bald eagle, the turkey was going to be the national bird of the United States. And it's because I mean- of freaking everywhere so i'm gonna go i'm gonna go a turkey is i'm gonna go they're adequately rated because they really are cool like to me as far as like interacting with so i've interacted with a lot of turkeys out in the wild sitting in tree stands you know being around them calling them in and and dude it is it is one of the most fascinating experiences And, and to hear them like the coolest part is to hear all the noises that they make like the little nuancey noises that mm-hmm. they make because a lot of people think like you know you've got this call response turkey thing you know you got like the the putt and the purr you know like arr, 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 and, the, yep. and then they gobble back right yep but then these turkeys like they'll do this thing called drumming and like like you'll hear them doing it and like it'll get real quiet and you hear them they'll go boom boom and it's like this sound that they make in their chest and it's really cool. And then, and then the hens, like a lot of people think like hens don't make a bunch of noise and like people like want to do very minimal calling. But if you ever like are around a hen, she's like constantly making noise. She's like, rrr, 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 and kind of, I don't know, dude. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that is cool, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I've had, a. it's like, I've, I've been lucky enough to spend enough time in the woods and enough time, even on the water and like by myself, that's what I do love about a kayak that I've had very, like a lot of intimate experiences with wildlife because they don't know you're there. And it's like yesterday, me and John were floating and I wasn't catching any fish. So I got bored. So I pulled out my <laughs> peanut butter and jelly sandwich and just like was floating down the river, like eating my peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And like, it was amazing how, when you don't paddle, when you don't have a rod in the water, when there's nothing moving, right? Fish, the birds, 
the wildlife starts to kind of like I had fish just swimming up to my kayak. And at one point I stuck my foot in the water and I had literally three spotted bass just like following my foot. Cause they were just like, what is that? Like, we want to know what that is. And the, dude, I just, I don't know. I, I think that a Turkey is adequately rated for the bird that it is. I think there's cooler birds and I think there's less cool birds, but I think a Turkey is a Turkey is pretty badass bird. And the yeah. fact that plus the, the national bird is pretty cool too. That is cool. I, I'll I'll believe that. Uh, you know, everyone I talk to that hunts turkey, they're obsessed. I mean, Mike Matt Airy, uh, you know, decent friends with Matt Airy. Uh, back from when I lived in the Carolinas and stay in touch with him still, and he's actually doing really good in the uh, elite tournament right now. I think he might be second or third mm-hmm. um, at, at the end of the day here. But um, he is he's obsessed with hunting, like whether it's deer hunting or turkey hunting. He'll make all the noises like you're doing, like really good, and he's just obsessed with it. And I mean, the passion that people that turkey hunt and that he's like you know, when he talks about it, I mean, you can tell it's, it's gotta be underrated, you know, cause they're into it as much as like, we're into the fishing thing. You know what I mean? And he, you know, he almost wants to just get off the water all the time. And like, if he got, if he wasn't fishing tomorrow, I guess it's still Turkey season. I don't know down there in Florida where they're at, but I guarantee you he'd be trying to find somewhere to get in the woods See, and go I kill a Turkey. But love to do is find a river full of bass and go kill a Turkey in the morning get it all dressed out, do what I need to do with it, and then get him. Like, no, 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 better yet. Paddle in with the rods and the reels and a shotgun. Find some pull up public land on a river somewhere, pull up there, kill a turkey, then get back in my kayak and float down to a takeout and catch bass all the way down through there with my dead turkey in my turkey kayak. In the, yeah. <laughs> Either way. See, now that would be cool. That would be you got to do that. Yeah. You yeah, need, I need to do that, man. There's a yeah. lot of people that actually utilize the boats to hunt, like deer, turkey, anything. Uh, boar, whatever. I mean, I've seen people, it, you know, even I think, I think I've even seen people do like moose that way. I mean, they had to cut them up and whatever, and, like get them all like, uh, but it's easier to pack something out. I mean, to float something out than it is to like carry it, you absolutely. know, I mean, walk it out in a backpack. So yeah, that makes sense. That's cool, man. I, I think you need to do that one time. Like one, I mean, I'm sure you will. You got a whole life of content creation ahead of you. So that's, that's on it. the list. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, Next, yeah. Buddy, next, next, yep. You, uh, I'm excited about next week. You're yep. you're an awesome human, and I always enjoy having you on the podcast. You're a good friend. I'm glad I know you. And uh, where's the butt? It sounds like you're about to do a butt. You're looking no. away like you're breaking up with me. You're like, no, no, you can't look no me in butt. the eye. You can't look but, me in the eyes. Just no. <laughs> but, listen here. Greg Drury. Uh, <laughs> no, but seriously, buddy. I, I listen, I really am excited, man. Next week's gonna be fun. I'm glad you came on the podcast. Everybody, if you've not signed up for Sholey Palooza, you need to do it. If you live in Michigan and you need want to fish in a kayak tournament, Whitehall, Michigan, I'm gonna be at that one. Fun. I'm gonna be at the Susky. Um, I may even come out to uh, Arkansas. We're gonna we're gonna see about that one. I mean, dude, like I'm excited about this and I'm excited we're doing it, cool. and I can't wait to get into the first one and send it and see what happens and do we're we're a week out like we got yeah, a week we're, well yeah we're, we're we're two weeks out i think yeah. two weeks but but you're gonna be there probably in you know nearly a week you know what i'm saying like the pre-fishing the practice yeah. but you can still register all the way up to thursday's opening ceremonies may 2nd so you still have plenty of time to register come on out we got everything's on that website you guys can Check it out, kayakadventureseries.com. You will not be disappointed with the amount of talent that's there and people. Gene Jensen, he's doing a seminar. We all know he is, you know, you know, intellect for kayak fishing and rigging. I mean, even even Chad Hoover said he might show up. He, I think he might just come and hang out and just just fish, just be a kayak angler on that side of things. He's obviously doing so much running other his series and everything else he's doing. He needs a break too. You know, everyone needs a break. Steve Owens has signed up. He's going to fish. It. He's in the tournament. So nice. it's, it's, we're all coming together as a, as a family and the raise the, you know, whole you know, rising tide raises all ships. It sounds stupid and silly, but I really think when you look at our, when you look at our roster right now, who's in it and all the States that come from and all the names, I mean, you might recognize a couple, but you, even if you recognize them, you don't recognize them as tournament anglers. This is bringing in new and different people. And what that's mm-hmm. going to do is really try to grow this cool, fun sport of competitive kayak fishing and, and hopefully they fall in love with it and they can, and there's only six of these events. So most people probably only go to, you know, maybe two or three. There's a lot more weekends than that out there guys. And a lot more great tournaments with all the other series out there that the, you know, high level series. So I think it's a nice stepping stone for people to work their way up. And if you see Russ Snyder's who's in this tournament, 
or, uh, you know, any big hammer, Christine Fisher is supposed to be fishing one later this year in, in Wisconsin and, uh, any of the big hammers out there that are actually Jody Queens and, you know, the big national names that you see, it's just an opportunity to, to try to beat them on a stage that you can, because you got a day and a half to catch the five fish, you know, it's not five fish on each day, you know, Friday, it's not 10 total, it's just five. And, mm -hmm. and that really levels that playing field out a lot. Mm -hmm. Plus this is all water. They don't, they haven't all fished yet because it's new. So it's new to them too. And, uh, and, and chance to beat them. If you don't, it's a chance to rub elbow, elbows with them, hang out with them. And they're all the friendliest folks, you know, kayak anglers are all so friendly. They'll be happy to help you out and, uh, get you some information and, you know, so you can hang out with them too. So it's a win-win, you know, no matter what. That's right. That's right. We'll see you guys gotta, there. You gotta beat me, but it's a win-win. Yeah. yeah. Right, ladies and gentlemen. And John. And John, ah. it's going to be do listen. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not I'm not joking when I say this. You do not have to worry about me. It's John Dalton. You have to worry about that. Son <laughs> of a bitch. I love him <laughs> so much. I would do anything for that man, but he will beat your eyeballs in. And I am really <laughs> it, it doesn't, dude, like in the thing about John is he does it so nonchalantly. It's not yeah. Like, it's not like he's like, I'm going to go to this tournament. I've got this figured out. I'm going to go win. Dude, I he, literally, John wasn't going to show up until Thursday. Yeah, he, he doesn't. <laughs> he's just going to fish Friday and Saturday and just send it. And the thing is, is like, I'm like, hey, you know, I'm going to go down there Tuesday, practice a little bit, get my bearings, figure out what the hell's going on, try yep. to fish for some fish. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And John's like, John and John, the thing is, is he would show up. Thursday night, get there, wake up Friday morning, not get to the damn water until like 3.30, probably catch 5.20 inches by 5 o'clock, get off the water, and then the next morning like somehow call up four times. Like that's what John does. Yeah. Yep. 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 He's just, got that. He's got an act for it for sure. So he's epic. He's epic. All right, ladies yep. and gentlemen, as always, you guys are sweet, and we will see you next week. All right. Later. Bye.